human body has traveled a long way down the road of evolution. But the genetic machinery that brought us here has always been one of the great mysteries of life. Geneticist Matt Scott has a dream, to find the way the past is still present within us all. One of the hardest things to answer is what happened to give rise to new working shapes. Understanding how these genes build those patterns is, I think, a dream come true for a lot of biologists. Geneticists turn to fruit flies, a long-standing genetic model. The beauty of fruit flies is sometimes most apparent only to those who work on them, but I think most people who began to examine the exquisite pattern of muscles in the fly or the amazing facets of the eye in all their complexity and elegance would begin to appreciate, even without understanding the beauty of the underlying genetics, what we enjoy as we work on this animal. Our fruit fly has on the order of 120 million subunits of DNA, and embedded in, that, in all of that DNA is the information for over 13,000 genes. That's a pretty large number, but it's not the number of genes so much as the control of those genes and the complexity with which the genes are brought together to build something as complex as a nervous system or the musculature of an animal. How do cells know where to grow a head, a wing, or a leg? This leg looks like a fairly normal leg, but it's actually coming out of the head of the fly, right beside that eye that you're looking at. So this is an amazing thing, and it seems to indicate that the gene that was affected in this fly has some role in controlling where you put legs and what develops into a leg. Mutant flies led to an important discovery. The genes that determine the patterns for the whole body, called Hox genes, are activated early in an animal's development. They tell other genes how to turn the embryo into a fly. Here is an embryo where we're looking at a gene that's on, where you see the brown stain and off elsewhere. And you can see it's a striped pattern. And those Hox genes, which discriminate among these segments, which cause them to take on separate fates, will cause some of them to become segments that'll produce a wing, and other ones will produce a leg, and other ones will produce certain sensory structures. The Hox genes act like signals, telling the cells of the fly when where and how to grow. And Hox genes don't exist in flies alone. The same set of Hox genes has traveled the tracks of evolution from the ancestral worm to all its descendants. One of the most exciting discoveries of the past couple of decades in developmental biology and genetics has been the recognition that similar genes make similar structures in very different organisms. Animals have come to be very different from each other, and yet we can trace these genetic similarities that say some of their parts are built using some of the same genes, and there must have been some sort of ancestor that had those genes. And one of the great mysteries is, what did that ancestor look like? 